Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, you guys. We are live. Uh, you guys, you, we are live here on the Brush by Brandy uh, Facebook page and my YouTube channel. Um, my name is Brandy. I am the owner and artist behind Brush by Brandy. My husband Sean is here behind the camera to help Somewhere. answer to help answer any questions. He's looking way up here. Yeah. <laughs> he well, he he's you can tell he's out of his element. His work has been crazy today, so now he gets to come do my work with me. Um, okay, you guys, so we are going to paint a piece of furniture tonight. Uh, I paint here live with you guys every Thursday evening, and we're going to start a new project today that I intend to work on uh, with you guys over the next few weeks. And this one's going to feature um, some new products and some really pretty paint colors. So uh, let me show you guys what I have picked out here. So I'm pulling my inspiration. This is a new transfer. Um, this is the Collage Chronicles trans uh, collection for Blue Design with Crema. And I'm kind of pulling my inspiration from here. I really like this transfer. I'm kind of feeling it. It's a little different for me. Um, but what I want to do, I think, is I want to cut this transfer apart. This is the bottom piece of it. And I want to make it kind of look like an apothecary cabinet is kind of what I'm thinking and I'm going to do that using molds so these are a whole bunch of new molds that I just got that are part of this same collection um, Redesign with Prima had a release this week and this was one of the collections and I really like it so I have all these new molds this one's called the Astrid mold and I'm probably going to use all of these in some combination um, this one is called Lissandra um, this one is Lucian. They're all frames, but they're all different size uh, or very ornate. So what I think I want to do is I want to cut my transfer apart and put uh, pieces of it inside the frames all, all over the furniture piece. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I don't know. We'll see where it goes. If it looks crazy, then maybe I'll be like, whoa, let's take a step backwards. This one I think I'll use a lot. This one's called Finley. And it's because it's got this big frame around the outside. I think this will be a good one to frame out some of these little features that are in here, like the butterflies. I've, this one's got a frame around it already, so maybe I can um, find one that will fit, you know, something to add a little bit of detail. So it looks three-dimensional. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Put some of the butterflies. There's little uh, jars and beetles and, and plant samples. And I'll put it all inside like a little frame. That beetle looks like the one I saw on the front porch the other day. Yeah, this one right here. We, I mean, two size, we two did scale. Have one like this. Well, what I'm learning is I usually paint out here with my garage door open. And like at night in summertime, I got to close it or things try to come visit me. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. But tonight we're going to go ahead and get the paint on this piece. So let me show you guys what I have planned for the paint color. My transfer has a lot of blue, or I'm sorry, greens, um, some browns, golds in it. And so I'm gonna start out with some blues underneath so that they have some contrast. And so I'm gonna use a Wiseau paint. This one's called Poseidon. I love this color, love this color. It's deep, rich blue with green undertones. Karen is one of the owners of Wiseau and she like speaks to my heart with all her blue green colors. They have a huge collection of them. It also happens to be my favorite to work in. So Poseidon is beautiful. <laughs> Renee, if I were a bug, I'd visit you too. <laughs> oh, thank you. I think that's a compliment. I don't know. Well, I I wouldn't. Uh, I I took my broom and I gently guided the bug away. Well, if from we my... could just make it just bugs, maybe that would be okay. Yeah, I gently guided it away from my workspace. I would be more friendly to you, Renee. I wouldn't brush you away with a broom. Maybe. Okay, this one's called Siren Song, and I see this on camera every time, and if you guys have ever worked in Siren Song, it never, the camera does not do Siren Song justice. It is super deep, rich. It looks more blue on camera, I think. Um, and then another shade I've got is Deep Turquoise, which is a little bit lighter than Siren Song. So kind of three tones in that blue-green range. I've got one coat on the sides of this, um, right now, I just have a coat of Wiseau primer in light gray on here. I am going to do a wood stain top, although I haven't finished that yet. So it's got some primer up there. I'm going to put some keyholes around because it has keyholes, but they don't have anything around them. So I want to make those a feature. So lots of molds on this one is kind of what I'm thinking. 
All right, you guys want to get some paint on it? Hmm. Yeah, not really. Sean's a little tired tonight. You guys be gentle. Be gentle to him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he works in the financial world, which is kind of a hot mess right now. So we've been through it before. I used to work in the financial industry with him. And so when we were both doing it at the same time, it was less fun. Uh, it's, it's, a. Uh... I gotta start moving some cameras because we're looking at the back of your noggin. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, okay, so I'm, I'm starting down at the bottom and I'm starting with the color Poseidon. Um, now this is my base coat. So what I kind of envision is once I get these blues on here, I'm going to layer some greens and golds on, on top of it. That's kind of what I'm thinking. You know, I'll have kind of a, a gently layered finish, not something super crazy. But right now, I'll, um, we'll do a little bit of that, I think, as I get to the sides of this piece. But I wanted to show you guys uh, the front of it first. So we're just going to paint tonight. It's crazy. Um, I've kind of been itching to start this piece because I kind of had an idea what I wanted to do. Um, let me also miss, mention this. I'm missing a piece of the molding right here. I'm not going to worry about it right now, but I will need to. I have a trim mold that I made a long time ago, and I'm going to need to cast that in some resin. And what, what I mean is I, I have a basic, like, a, what's this, like a half round that I copied ages ago, and I kept the mold. And so I can make a copy of that using that existing mold that I have. And that's a pretty cool thing. Like some molds you see are really common and this is one of them. And so you, I just make a copy of it and then you just hang on to that, never get rid of it. And you'll use it over and over and over again. So I picture this piece being kind of eclectic. Um, just kind of fun. Oh, I put my paint on top of the transfer. No, don't mind me. I need to. Oh, I thought you were. Just I need to give the people what they want, what they desire. I, I need to get in. I wasn't I thought, trying to help you. I thought you just wanted to see the transfer. <laughs> so I'm um I'm not planning on doing like a smooth blend or anything on this one because it's kind of an eclectic look. I'm gonna do kind of an eclectic um paint finish too. Oh, Linda's watching and painting your Hoosier cabinet. Is it from Indiana? Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Um. I've done a, I haven't done a Hoosier cabinet in years, years. I had some cus, a custom one brought to me years ago. They're kind of fun to work on. I see them every once in a while. I'm sure other places in the in the country get them more frequently than I do here in California. Huh. Belva's got a good point, which will tie into Susan's uh, question as well. Uh, how do you make a copy of a molding, and do you always do your trim molds in resin? Are you guys going to make me show you that? I probably should, but I don't have any of this. I hadn't got the stuff out. I should show you guys how to do it, huh? Um, there are two different ways to do it. You can do it in hot glue or you can do it in resin. I went ahead and just made a copy of mine. Hang on, let me think. Okay, if you guys want to give me a minute to get this stuff out, I'll show you how to make a copy of it. You guys want to do it? Because I'm going to have to dig some stuff. So do you want to hang out with Sean for a minute or is that too really? painful and you'd really rather not or do you want to see how to make a copy of the mold it's like what was that guy's name ben stein the guy that's totally like yeah, yeah, yeah monotone yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay i'm probably gonna have to add some water to this in a minute so that i can um, oh let me go get a bucket yeah so that i can finish working on it but uh i'm gonna i'm gonna dig you guys will have to talk to sean for a minute i'm gonna try to see what i have well what gets there. tough is they only type back did anybody I don't know if you know this. I'm, I'm, I'm a savant when it comes to technology. Well, I'm trying to think, too, what do I have that's faster than I can um, show you guys. Oh that's going to be a mess to try to find. That's what it sounds like every time we get in the car. Can you hear all the stuff dropping in the background? Uh, it's all right. Through here? It's no big deal. I'll show you guys the hot glue gun method because that's going to be way faster for me to find. And... I can make yeah, sure. Yeah, see, they gotta give, gotta give the ladies what they want. You gotta show them. Okay, let me plug my hot glue gun in. And while I'm doing this, can you go grab me the, nope. um, can you grab me the cooking spray out of the kitchen? What? I just want to whip up. That's about the only time you're going to use it. I just want to whip up a quick recipe. Goodness. Okay, I got my hot glue gun out. It's a little dusty. A little spidery. Like our yeah, I know I literally had just been cleaning spider webs out here before. We have pest control service, but they didn't get my spider webs this time. Okay, so I'm going to let this heat up for a minute. And 
I got some modeling clay too that I could use. It's gonna turn my hands blue. So this is one option. This stuff is pretty cool. Um, this is a modeling clay. I keep mine in a Ziploc bag just so it won't dry out, but I've had this for quite some time. This is from Alumalite, which is the company that makes amazing casting resin, which is the two-part casting resin that you see me use all the time. So this is pretty cool stuff. It does turn my hands blue. Oh, you're a smurf. Yeah, so that's a nice feature. I'm going to show you two different ways that you can copy a piece of molding. I wasn't planning on this. Can you give me a screwdriver? Goodness. I, I swear I just thought, oh, we'll just do painting tonight. So easy. What a nice break to just do some painting. And then you guys were all, no, Brady, get to work. Strong arm. And I was like, okay, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, so let me pull one of these drawers out so I can access the molding a little bit easier. I'm just going to take this out so it's not in my way. Because what I want to copy is one of these right here. And this could this process will work for any type of molding. If it's if I more, just move this. Yeah. I mean, we're, you're not going to this any <laughs> no, not, anytime, not anytime know, soon. Not anytime soon. What that's, you planned? That's no. a good like couple weeks off before we get to the transfer on yeah. this piece. So so my molding is really simple. This is just like a half round, but this process would work if you had like a beautiful medallion with tons of details on it or a curved foot or anything like that, the same process would work. So I'm gonna start with the, I'll show you the modeling clay first. And this stuff is reusable and it's really cool. So I'm just gonna take a tiny piece off of this block right here. Uh, Cause I don't need a huge amount. The, the size of the molding that I'm trying to make is, is the size of one of these sides here. So what's that? It's like six inches. So I will make a, a worm out of this it's like i get to play with clay at the same time look what i made please tell me she looks not on you're not impressed <laughs> okay and then i can just copy this and i'll just wrap it and i try to make it like a channel because if i want to pour resin in here i need it to not spill out so i'm wrapping it also underneath so that when i pull this off yeah. And I actually fill the mold. All I need is this cooking spray, the hot glue gun, and the screwdriver, <laughs> and this, chair, and this and pedal this lamp. Ball. Name that movie. So I'm going to show you guys a couple different ways because uh, this is I like this clay because I can reuse this. Then when except for the, except for the blue hand part. Yeah. Um, but when I'm done with this, I can squish it back into a ball, put it back in my Ziploc, and I can reuse this again. I actually have a mold that I already have made of a trim like this, but I'm not going to try to, I have to dig for it. And then I can just pull this off gently because I don't want to ruin my um, shape that I just made. Okay, and let me show you guys what this is here. Okay, can you see that it's got now the shape of that mold? And then I will just pinch off the ends. And I can pour my casting resin in here. I would need to put this on a flat surface and I can pour this in casting resin and I'll come out with a um, with a piece of that trim. Yes, Paula, this is MacGyver furniture painting. Actually, she just made a table leg. How about that? Yeah. What do you think? Well, that could be any that could be any molding that I wanted to copy. It, like I said, it could be, you know, a beautiful medallion or something that you're missing a piece of or um, and then if I make you a beautiful medallion out of that, you cannot call Let me see if my hot gun, glue gun is okay. It is, it's I'm warm. I'm just gonna tell you it's a family heirloom. It's warm. I don't know if it's warm enough. Uh, my gun takes a little bit to heat up. Okay, this method is gonna require me to clean something off. Oh, good. So, this is my first choice is to use the, the clay. It's super easy. This is a great thing to have. Like I said, this it comes in a block like this. Mine's in a Ziploc bag. You can also put a wet paper towel in if you're storing clay like this. This is specifically a modeling clay that's meant to be reused over and over and over again. That's why I like this stuff. Um, but I can put a wet paper towel in here. It will keep moisture in there to keep my clay from drying out because obviously this isn't something that you use every day, but it's a super good thing to have. It's reusable, non-drying, mo synthetic modeling clay from Alumalite, which is the company that makes amazing casting resin. Um, 
Do you want to get my resin and I'll? No, I really don't. I know. Be careful because that one it has the broken lid on it. It's what? always it's always open all the time. No, that one. That yeah, one? It's, uh, no, no, my oh. uh, yeah, that one, and a little cup and a popsicle stick. Oh, I'm sorry. I really wasn't planning on doing this tonight. I was like, I'll just get a coat of paint on. I can fix I just, it later. I need my dog. Yeah. I forget his name, but I don't. I'll put this on my YouTube video too. Okay. My and, lamp. And can you have this the stool? And I need a popsicle stick. I can't. I know. This is too much. I can't do this. Here's a stool. Let's see that. Where are you going? Oh, that kind of stool. And I need a cup. The cups that I have. See, I usually. You want me to go on camera and do this? This for you? is why I try to plan out everything I'm gonna do for the night, and then when you guys pop on me, that you're like, we want to see. Feelings. That I'm unprepared. Okay. So now I've got this copy that I made of my little mold right here, my little molding, and I'll put it on a flat, flat surface, semi-flat, like this not flat stool. <laughs> Basically, everything I tell you <laughs> that I'm showing you is wrong. Do the opposite. Yeah, do the opposite. <laughs> Can I get you anything else? Oh, I need to stir this. Do you, what? Right, huh? Whatever, we'll try it like this. Oh, All right. man. I'm going to mix sure the tiniest bit of my resin because this is a super small mold. Precisely yeah, measured. Like yeah. Well, this resin is really forgiving. It will set up even if my mixture is slightly uh -huh. off. So I mixed equal parts of A and B in my cup. I'm going to stir it. I think I'm a little shy on one of my parts because I did not measure it because I don't have a measuring cup. And then I'm just going to pour in this little channel that I made. Pam's going to have to watch that movie now. <laughs> they must hate this oil. Okay. And if I did this right, it should stay inside here. Although this wants to tip. A little tiny bit okay and I have a little bit of extra resin so I'm just gonna pick one of my random molds here and I'm gonna pour a mold Let's pour a keyhole because I am gonna use some keyholes I really like which keyhole I like this one uh, which one all right I never waste resin I will always pour it in something yeah, my mold is not level, so it's wanting to drip a little bit, but that's okay. I need to prop this end of it up. Let me stick under there and see if it holds it. Level surface is what's ideal, guys, okay? All right, so option B, let me show you another method while this is setting up, and then we'll pull this out. I'm more than likely going to use this method here, but I'm going to show you how to make a mold another way, because this is a way that most people have in their home. Um, if you take your piece of molding that you want to copy and spray it with a little bit of a lubricant, in this case, I'm using trusty old Pam, Pam, not Pam Jacobs. Yep. So my friend She's Pam, right my cooking spray. I'm going to try to not get this all over my piece because I will need, yeah, to, clean can you do that? I need to clean yeah. it off once I'm done. It's, it's an oil, so it's going to be, it's going to create a resist to my paint. So wherever you guys put this, you have to clean it off. What if and you I'm use spray. like 40 or something? I still would have to clean it. <laughs> yeah. um, that's a little heavy, so I don't want it like dripping. So I'm going to just take the excess off. And then I have my hot glue gun here. And I'm going to basically squirt enough glue out. This one takes longer too than my modeling clay. And I'm going to wrap, same thing, wrap my molding. I know too many lines from that movie. It's because I watch those quirky movies all the time. Yeah, Sean has, That's how I clear Sean a room has out. terrible taste in movies. I rarely have the attention span to actually watch a movie, so it's usually on in the background, so I can't tell you what happens in any of them. All right, so I'm just going to wrap this in hot glue. And like I said, you can do the same method with any type of molding. So if it's a foot, if it's a what? medallion, not Sean's foot. Okay, and I'll just keep going. You know, I need about six inches of trim here. I don't really need this, so I'm not going to go the whole direction. And That's then like a foot right there. this, okay. ne this, <laughs> you're super good at measuring that. 
then the I need camera to, shakes. Then I, I need to let this sit and, and dry for a minute. Okay. While that's going on, my resin is setting up. So this is my keyhole that I poured. I'm just going to put this up here because that's going to be extra for later. My little uh, channel that I've got here is, is setting up. So what do you think, guys? Uh, that's two options for uh, creating a copy of a piece of molding. I'm going to get some cleaner. I'm looky here. Yeah, this is my first choice. Obviously, that was way easier with the modeling clay. And then we'll pull the resin out once it's done. But then I can just ball that modeling clay back up. I can reuse it again and again and again. So that's my first choice. It's just way easier. Um, there is also, there's other options for creating molds. There is a putty. I'll show you guys the putty. Oh, we're going on the move? No, I'll bring it over there. So this is amazing mold putty, which is, it's a two part putty that you mix together. And uh, this is a copy of a horseshoe and I've used this several times. Uh, it's one I can keep and reuse over and over again. But I made a copy of a horseshoe and um, this is a putty that you squeeze together and you can copy anything that you want. And this, this dries permanent. So this is now a, a set mold that I have that I can keep. So there are a few of these that I have for different things. Like there have been a few times where I get old vintage hardware. I'll have this beautiful like keyhole or something and I'll make a copy of it before I put it back on the piece. Cause I'm like, that's gorgeous. I might want to use it again. Um, so sometimes it is nice to make and keep molds like this that are actually hardened dried versus the clay that is going to, it's never going to harden. So uh, some of those I do end up keeping. My uh, hot glue is not quite dry yet. Blueberry bagels. Donna. <laughs> Damn it, Donna. <laughs> All right, you want to make sure that you use the, I use the cooking spray as my lubricant, but that you put some sort of lubricant on underneath your hot glue. If you choose to make a mold out of hot glue, it will want to stick to your paint and to your wood. Um, this one's not quite dry yet. I was trying to see if I could get it off anyways, but I'm not going to be able to. And now I have oil on my paint that that's, dries, yeah, that's so great. now I can't, even, I can't even paint there. Thanks everyone for the idea. <laughs> so I'm going to move. Yay. I'm going to move my resin out of the way, and I'll keep painting on here. And I'll come get my hot glue off in a minute. All right, I'm going to switch to my siren song. I told you I'm going to need to add some water. Um, I don't have that lubricant up on this drawer, so I'll go ahead and work, kind of work around that spot so I can get a cleaner and clean that off before I add paint to it now. So just be super aware of that. That's the most, you know, the, the easiest way because most people have a glue gun and some cooking spray at home that you can make a copy of something. Um, it's not my favorite though because it's messier. Um, so that's kind of the... Uh, I don't know, the MacGyver way of what you have at home that you can use if you, in a pinch if you need to copy a piece of molding. I don't know, was that interesting at all? You can fly inside of here too. I haven't done that on camera in a long time. I do have a video with the hot glue method. That's, up, that's on my YouTube channel. It's super old. And you know what that video reminds me of? I'm adding water because I uh, was talking and my paint started drying. And so I'm adding water so that I can brush this Poseidon around the edges into that siren song. Normally I probably wouldn't use the water because I would have done this all while my paint was still wet. But since I chose to take the scenic route, um, that video that's on YouTube, Sean might remember this, but it was when we were building our house and I was covered in poison oak and I'm wearing a tank top, and so I look like a I look like a leper. Every time I watch it, I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to take this video down. People are gonna think something's wrong with me. But it's still up, it's super old. Obviously, we built and our I house like comment. five years ago. <laughs> yeah, on the story about why we had poison oak. Because we uh took a tree down when we first moved out here and didn't realize that there was vining poison oak in all the trees. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and make a swirl through my paint. Because I don't, I'm not trying to create a perfect blend for this, and I actually want a little more texture in my brush strokes. 
This is just my base coat. I can see some of that primer through, but I just want to leave this mark in my paint. All right. Let's see if my hot glue is dry. Can you grab me a cleaner? Any any this cleaner over there? This is this is insane. I gotta call me union rep. <laughs> yeah, do that. I dare you. Well, this one says cleaner. Yeah. <laughs> is it? <laughs> Super name brand. Okay, so same thing I just created that I did with the modeling clay, only this time it's in the hot glue. And this I can keep for forever, and I would have a copy. This one does have an air bubble in it, so it's going to have a flaw. Um, and the air bubble made a hole, so it's going to make my resin leak out. So I would just plug that okay. with a little bit of hot glue before I poured it. So be careful. Of oh, this should be good. <laughs> hot glue makes flawed molds. So that's another option, but let me find my, can you grab me that little one that I made? Come on. While I clean this off. Oh, it looks like it leaked through. Oh no, you overfilled it. Yeah, I overfilled it, so just, okay. Right so there. this is my, um, oh no, it's, it's not fine. hardened yet, yeah. so I'm gonna put it back up here. Way to keep it level. Yeah. Well, at least, at least it'll be bendy so I can um, put it on my piece. All right, so let's clean off this uh, cooking spray. Don't spray cooking spray on your furniture piece and then not clean it off. All right, and then I can put my drawer in and we can resume our regularly scheduled program. I've got a little piece of hot glue right here. I'm going to get off. All right, so that was fun, huh? And then once I have a copy made, I will just glue it on. All right, we're back. All right, you guys want to really paint now? And we'll check on my mold in a minute. And hopefully I got enough that I can actually replace that. I really was just going to paint and then I thought, oh, I'll just do that on my, before my second coat. I'll make a copy of it. So this color is that Siren Song and it's a super rich, deep teal. These are just going to be some of my under colors, I think. I, um, I'll have some greens going over the top of this to kind of lighten it up as I go. So when I'm doing layered paint finishes, I start with my darker colors on the underneath and then I go lighter as I go up top so that I have that contrast in between each layer. So I'm kind of blending it at the edges just so my center is a little bit lighter than the uh, outer edges, but it's not going to be, this is not going to be a smooth blend. Ooh, s'mores. Who is, is that Donna? No. We're doing wordplay. That's okay. <laughs> this isn't about you. You guys, you guys are distracting me. Oh, it's not about. It's no. not about me. No. Don't worry about it. Sorry. You're just on camera. I don't know why I have to make it all about, all about me. Take it down a notch. All right. I want this to be consistent. So now that I have all my drawers back in, I'm just going to go ahead and fix this top section. A little bit of water so my brush glides. I don't want a lot of paint more water than paint that I'm using to correct this. And it's just because I want my, my um, I'm, I'm going to call it a blend, but it's not going to be a blend because it's a little bit messier than a blend. But I want it to be consistent moving from the top drawer to the bottom drawer. So now I'm going to add back in that same texture. I have better coverage now on that top drawer because I have more coverage up there. Um, one thing I like about Wise Owl, someone asked me this question actually on my Instagram, uh, what, yesterday, um, is it doesn't have a high tendency to reactivate. Some paints do, and it makes it hard to blend. Some, sometimes when you're doing certain looks, reactivation can be a, a perk, a plus. Blending is not one of them. If you have a paint that reactivates easily, it's really frustrating to blend. Because what's going to happen, you're adding water and you're overworking the paint, 
you're going to reactivate it over and over and over again. So that's usually paints that have high clay content. That was the question that I got was why I don't use certain paints that have higher clay content. I like them. They're fun to play with, but they do different things really well. And that reactivation factor um, makes certain paints hard to blend if they have a high clay content. So this, I, this is just two colors that I'm doing. I think I'm going to step it up lighter as I keep going through the coats. So I'm going to keep this one pretty dark and I'll use that um, deep turquoise that I got out. We'll, we'll switch to the sides and I'll start adding some of the lighter colors after I get this on. So this is kind of freeing. This is just laying paint on. It, it will give me a, a lightly blended look, but it's going to be pretty messy. And I like these looks because I'm thinking kind of, like I said, like an apothecary cabinet, a little mysterious, a little. So I feel like if it had a perfect paint finish on it, like super smooth and um, it, it wouldn't fit with the look that I'm going for. Got to turn it a little bit this way. So as side. far as mica powder, what colors would you uh, recommend? Oh man, okay, so obviously all of them. But what would <laughs> yeah. you? Yeah, no, I do. That's a great question. I do have some recommendations. Um, do I have my mica powder? No, I put it away. Oh, do you want me to go get it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's on that shelf. Here we go. Over there, where, with my resin stuff. What? Like top shelf. Yep, yeah. uh, should be up there in that big Ziploc bag. All right, and now I'm putting those swirl marks in my paint. What this is gonna do is when I go to layer paint over the top, it's gonna have a little bit of texture in it. Uh, it's gonna give me some brush strokes for my next layer to catch onto, which I want. Because I'm gonna add some layers over the top of this. So when you're doing a layered paint finish, there is a lot of planning that goes into it. What you want underneath, what do you want peeking through? Okay. <laughs> and some birthday cash you need to spend it <laughs> okay that's uh, the mica powder yeah, hey I'll, emily i'll go through a couple things with you hey emily emily was just live i got a notification but i couldn't get it on and watch i, I try to watch whenever i can i'm always sad when i miss you guys i watched um leah and bianca they did a live reveal um on the redesign with Prima page. Okay, so this is kind of what I'm going for. I've got swirl marks in my paint that's going to give me some texture for my brush strokes to pick up on. My um, hot glue gun is smelling like burnt hair, so I'm going nice. to unplug it. That's mine. It's probably touching the carpet somewhere. Yeah, it is. Like, it's let's, touching the carpet or it's mine? Let's check. <laughs> All right, let's check on my piece of molding. I'm going to take it out of my modeling clay. So I just peeled it out of the clay. I've got a little bit of excess resin that poured along the edges. It's not perfectly even on um, the top, but that's okay. I can cut those pieces off either using a piece of a pair of scissors, or ideally I would just make my mold a little bit better. Take a little more time with this than the five seconds I took. Can I get you scissors? All right, so then I will have a resin copy of this that I will glue right here. This is too long, so let's cut it with a pair of scissors. And then I, it, I need to, um, it's got a fat section right here. I, I, a judgment I, call. I didn't mean to fat shame my, yeah. my mold. It would look great in a bathing suit, I'm sure, just like me. All right, and, then I'm, and then I'm gonna cut off the ends and preserve the best part. Oh, that has a 45 degree corner, so I'm gonna picture frame the corner. And then I'll do the same thing down here. I feel like you're hiding something. Well, I am. Because you got to do it way over in the corner. Uh, yeah, that's the, piece, that's the piece of molding that I'm replacing. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so can you guys see that? No, not really. It's not glue because I don't have glue, and that's yet another thing I have to go get. Uh, I'll get it. I it got just, you. That's why it just fell off. Yep, I got it. 
this part brought to you by. So what I did is I just um, picture framed, I, I gave a 45 degree angle to the corners. Okay, so that'll match up to what's already on the body. I'm gonna add a little bit of glue. This is my tight bond quick and thick adhesive. My hands are blue. My glue is clogged. Everything's going right tonight. See, this is why you let me go with my regularly scheduled program. Structure, right. structure. Yeah, I need structure, guys. I don't work well on the fly. All right, and then I've got some glue on there, and I'm just going to glue this in. Get it nice and tight up into the corner. Screwdriver under your leg right there. Should you need the flat end of it to push? No, I need um, I need to get this drawer out. All right, I'm using my screwdriver to kind of guide the ends in so they match up with the ends that are already there. Get that excess glue off. And I've got, I mean, that was a pretty, that's a pretty simple piece of molding. Um, I probably would have been a little more cautious with making my mold. So that was, I just wiped away some of the excess glue butt this all the way up to the piece. And that looks pretty good. Oh, so I wish I could get in there a little closer, but you got all this crap in my way. That's called paint and we kind of need it. I'm referring to the stool and its contents, but that's all right. All right, and I did say I was gonna to talk to you guys about the mica powder, so. You know what, I'm just gonna for a second. All right, all right Sean's gonna get you guys in here on my, my molding. I think that's pretty good and then once I put paint on it uh, you won't even know that here let's put I'll just put the paint on it I would usually recommend that my uh, glue be dry Oops. and that's paint at an angle even it's that? white so it's going to take a little bit of extra paint to get coverage now but once that's dry it's going to look just like my furniture piece So I get you all this stuff and you still end up going to get more? I have so much stuff to Oh my gosh. No. I can't. So I was going to show you, I'm all about options here. Those colors look Oh, good. that's a wall. Those colors look good on camera. That wasn't my head. That was at least my mica powder. All right, let's talk micas and I'll tell you guys some of my favorites. Okay, these are my micas from Redesign with Prima. These are from Finnebear. And if you guys watched my live video on Monday, you saw me use these to color some of my molds. I don't have that sample because I actually put it on a piece. These come in sets of six powders and they're, um, they're split by color. Okay, so they're, they're themed. This is four sets in this bag here. What I like about the redesigned mica powders is the color selection is gorgeous. They come in these pinks, and bronzes and these are really fine powders that have a little bit of sparkle to them some of my favorites you got to have a good pearlescent white got to have a good pearlescent it's better white if you hold it up on its there you go again. okay so that's a must have um i use these very slowly and unless i unless you do a lot of resin projects in which case these go a little bit faster but they last a long time i love this dark bronze color it's like a deep brown with a little bit of sparkle to it i use this one a lot too another favorite that i have is this stuff here this is a it is a mica powder it's called gold metallic powder this is from Alumalite, which is the company that makes the resin but can you guys see the color on it it's an oh, antique gold right. it's an antique gold color Versus the gold that's in the Finnebear powders that I have, it's a little more yellow gold. So I like this antique gold a little bit better. So this gold from Alumalite is one of my favorites. That means I can make my molds be an antique gold. Um, I also have these here. 
these are from Illumilite also. Uh, they make also mica powders, and there's some in here that I like too. Uh, they have a black pearl, and these are just some colors that um, I don't necessarily have in the redesign powders, and so I fill those holes using the Illumilite powders. These colors are, there's a lot more primary colors in their line, so this is yellow, some bright blues. I don't use those as much. I tend towards the pinks, the browns, the, you know, the uh, muted tones that I can get in the redesigned mica powders. But this one I like, which is a pewter color, which is a dark black, almost a dark black silver kind of. So that's a good one to have. So, you know, it's the same as like paint. You use black and white a lot. You use gold and silver a lot. Those are good, pretty good tips to have. Some of these, uh, you know, funkier colors in here, like do I use a whole lot of this purple? No, probably not really. Do I use a whole lot of like hot pink? Not, not a ton. Every once in a while, it's nice for a flower or something. Um, you know, bright blue like this, I don't use a lot. So the fringe colors are nice to have, but... Obviously the black, the white, the gold, the silver, your basics are what I would totally recommend starting with. If you're gonna be doing like flowers with them, green, brown, um, pink if you want if you want flowers, green, the green, green and brown are for the leaves, obviously. So here are some different shades of green from Prima. Just depends on what I what what I would be pairing it with. This has got more blue in it. This one has more yellow in it. So anyway, I hope that was a little bit helpful. And I totally did stuff tonight that I wasn't planning on. And now my whole paint finish is super stalled. So this is a yes. really pretty base. <laughs> but now we're going to have to come back. But that was good. I'm glad I got to show you guys making that copy of that molding. And I got it done so I don't have to take care of it later. Uh, so my molding is copied there. And then I told you guys, this is my uh, modeling clay. It gets balled back up. What? It's not going to harden or, or dry. And I put it back in this bag. So I really have like one chunk off the block that I keep reusing over and over again. And I still have this whole block that I've never even touched. That's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, this is the problem. <laughs> I'm going to tell Aluma, like, who chose to make the clay blue? Why? Why? I'm staying away from this. Yeah, these. there must be a reason. Yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> Brain is I, hanging out with the blue man group. I, I know where your mind is. All right, and um, and then my hot glue mold is here. And this is one I can keep and use over and over again anytime I need to make a piece of channel molding like that. I'll probably toss this one because it's, it's pretty short. But things like this for where I made a copy of a horseshoe mold, I keep this forever. All right, guys, so... We're gonna be using the Collage Chronicles collection on this, uh, making a whole bunch of molds using that transfer. My base colors that I got on here tonight are Wise Owl Paint and Poseidon and Siren Song. And then I'm gonna add some greens on top of this so we'll get some layers, but that's gonna to have to wait till next week because I gotta go. Um, but I did wanna tell you guys some stuff. I don't know if you've heard already, but if you guys follow Wise Owl, on their social media pages, on their Instagram and Facebook. Can you, do you notice I'm covering this up because I don't want you to see the name? Oh, that's weird. There are new colors of Wise Owl's One Hour Enamel coming out. Yes, there are new colors. So this is one of them. There are five new colors. They will come out starting tomorrow. I already have some, some pieces done in them. They're beautiful. Wise Owl has incredible color taste. Um, and so starting tomorrow, Check out my social media pages and Wise Owl and their retailers, and you guys can see the five new colors of One Hour Enamel that are coming out. One Hour Enamel is their all-in-one paint. I use the chalk synthesis paint for this blended look tonight, but this is for your solid color finishes. It does not require sealing. It dries to a satin finish, so it's ideal for cabinets, front doors, um, bathroom vanities, things like that um, are ideal for One Hour Enamel, so. I use it on furniture too, though. I have a furniture piece coming in it. Sean loves spraying it for me. I just came up with a name for shut the front door. <laughs> I don't know what you're <laughs> doing over there. You're delirious tonight. All right, so you guys stay tuned for brand new colors coming out. They're really pretty. 
Um, I have a YouTube video coming out tomorrow that will use one of them. So check out my YouTube channel if you guys want to see some of those new colors in action. And I will show them all to you guys on my pages too. All right, you guys, I'm going to let you go. Everyone have a great weekend. It is hottest in here in California, 108 degrees this week. We will be out on the lake. I'm pretty sure of it. So thanks for telling me. Yeah. Surpri surprise. We popped our tube last weekend though. So we had to get a new one. All right, you guys have a great weekend and I will catch you next week and we'll continue working on this piece again.